So today we are, we are going to create a type of cityscape. Um, we're going to play a little make-believe with it um, and combine different types of architecture from different places of the world. So they're going to all mesh up into one. Normally you would just go to a country, see their style, then you'd have to go to a brand new country to see the other style. But we're going to make them all come together like they're friends. So you're going to have a white sheet of paper and please write your name on one side. You're going to have this thing. This is a stencil. And I want you to lay it in the middle of your paper. Okay? So you kind of want to eyeball. Is this the same as this down here? Is this the same as this over here? And you want to very, very, very lightly trace this stencil. Okay, you can barely see it because I did it so light. I want it light because we're going to be able to erase it at the end. So this area that you just drew out, that's going to be your drawing space. We're not even going to touch the outside. We're going to leave all that white. So you need to think to yourself, how do I want to make this cityscape? Basically, we're going to like stack different kinds of buildings. So you want to put like all types of Russian buildings at the bottom and then all Chinese buildings in the middle. Um, or do you want to mix and match them all? How do you want to do it? So I'm going to start with the bottom here and I'm just going to do very basic kind of design. And I think I'm going to use um, my English style first. So I will make a building and we're going to make these small. It's a challenge for us when we have to work tiny. You can use a ruler if you want these lines to be perfectly straight. I kind of like when they're a little wavy. So these are the kind of chimney stacks. Here's a room and I'll make some windows. Now you are going to have to add a lot of detail to this. You probably will have to color in your windows. So kind of with your best judgment, decide how many you want to draw. If you go too crazy, you might regret it later when you're coloring all this stuff in. Then next door, I might want to make just like a simple hut. And you can overlap. So you always can take your eraser. I'm going to overlap this a little bit just so it looks a little more interesting. create different sizes. Now if this is England, England is known for castles, so I might even go ahead and make a castle. Because why not? This is all kind of make-believe anyway. So your job now is to make a cityscape, keep making buildings, stacking them, overlapping them, and you don't necessarily have to go to that top line. You can stop about three-fourths of the way up, and then we will color this in, outline it, and color it in. So I'm going to keep going. You obviously can make this design completely your own, but you want to base it off of architecture that we've learned about. So we're not just designing our own buildings, we're basing it on real life. Okay. 
Okay, so I've completed my um, worldly cityscape. I have England, then Russia, then China, then Greece, and then I have um, some skyscrapers from New York City that were designed um, during the Art Deco period in the 20s. So now my job is to take a small Sharpie and to begin outlining all of this to make those lines permanent. Um, so what I might do, instead of making all the detail when you are drawing with a pencil, it's probably best to leave out some detail so you can just do it with the Sharpie. That's going to save you a lot of time. So for instance, this roof right here. I didn't draw anything with pencil, <clears throat> and I'm just going to go back with the Sharpie. That way I don't have to overlap my pencil lines because <clears throat> it might just take a little too long. So now you can add in textures. You can add like bricks, um, stone, any kind of thing that should be on your buildings. If you would like to, I'd probably use a bigger Sharpie for this. Um, if you want to color in black, your windows. Probably easier if you do it with a bigger Sharpie. But I want everything else with the skinny Sharpie because I like that thin line. I think that is going to give it a nice effect rather than a big old clunky fat line. Because this is so small, if we use a fat Sharpie, it probably won't make a lot of sense here. So take your time and go over your pencil marks. At the end, since this is permanent marker, I want you to take a big eraser and erase any pencil that we do see and the marker won't come off since it's permanent. So do that to make it nice and neat. Okay, so I've outlined everything with my skinny Sharpie. And I want you to notice how much detail I put into this. I made little things for the roof, I drew lines here, designs on my columns, on my Greek architecture, I put texture here. Notice how some of the outlines of the buildings, I've made a little thicker of a line so they stand out a bit more. I took the time to put in all these windows. I want you guys to do that same thing for me because trust me, it really will make a difference in how well this looks when you're done. I think this is a fabulous piece of art if you take the time to do it right. So this in and of itself is pretty awesome. The only problem I have with it, it's kind of hard to see some of the buildings. So I am going to add some color to it. And since these are very small shapes, I think the best thing we should use is colored pencils. Um, now, I want to trust you to really, really, really take your time with the colored pencils the same way you took your time in your drawing. Because again, it will make it so worth it at the end when you see the final finished piece if you do it well, as opposed to you getting sloppy with it. So you can play pretend with your colors. You can do realistic colors. Um, I think I'm going to stay towards the realistic side, maybe play a little bit with it. But remember, like the buildings in Russia are almost, they look like fairy tale buildings. So you can have a lot of bright colors coming in and out of there. Um, so I want you to really, really, really take your time with the coloring. And I'm going to start, let's see here. I'll start here on one of my Russian buildings just for demonstration and I'll do this kind of top here. So color pencils are nice because they have the nice sharp tip that we can get into the tiny areas. If we were to do this with a paintbrush it would be a lot more difficult. Alright, so I want you to fill in your whole shape and if you need to go darker to layer the colored pencil just color in a different direction than you colored before instead of pressing down super super hard to make it dark the best thing to do is just keep layering and that will make it darker yes that does take more time but that means better effort better payoff at the end so I'm 
coloring vertically. Now I'm going to go horizontally to make it a bit darker. The other cool thing about colored pencils is you can layer colors. So let me pick out some colors I might want to use. If you need to sharpen your pencil, you should have um, individual sharpeners in your table caddy. Some of you might, if they're long enough, um, you can put them into the pencil sharpener on the wall. But a lot of these get so tiny that I just like to use the hand sharpener. Okay, so for instance, I will color in between these green shapes with two colors of pink. So I will start with my light color. And you can create lights and darks through the pressure on your arm and your hand by layering in different directions. And you can also do it by taking a darker color and going on top. Of your other color and you can show value that way going from darks to lights. That's one of the really cool things I like about colored pencil. So it's, a, it's just a subtle effect. You can barely notice it, but it really, really adds a lot to your piece. So if you want to take the time to do that, that would be well worth it. And you don't have to do that with everything. Maybe just pick out the main buildings you want us to focus on. Maybe the ones you think you drew the best. Okay, so here's an example of what I really don't want to see in your coloring is I'm going to color this roof part, okay? I don't want that. I can tell you went quickly. I can tell you didn't hit the edges of your design. You even got outside the lines. This is what I don't want to see. This will take time and effort you will get tired and if this starts to happen then you've just ruined all the hard work okay so really really I don't want to see any of this really go slow stay in the lines as best as you can um, so I'm about halfway done and I just want you to see like some things I am leaving white and that's okay because that will look very nice you don't have to color every single thing in Notice down here how I changed pressure. I pressed hard, I pressed light, I pressed hard, I pressed light. You can play with that kind of stuff. Um, so like if you want a dark brown, you would press hard. If you want a light brown, you press light. So you can extend the life of this color. It's not just plain orange. It can be dark orange, medium orange, light orange. Okay? So think about that as you keep moving forward with this. Okay, so I am all finished with the coloring process and the colored pencils. This is the final complete image. I think it's super sophisticated and at the same time very fun to look at. Um, when you're done, I do want you to make your signature with a small Sharpie. And I want you to go ahead and write the year so you can keep this and know when you created it it's a beautiful beautiful image